Thunderbirds first launched onto British television in 1965, and for many fans remains the pinnacle of the Gerry Anderson legacy. Any more information? The series centered around the exploits of International Rescue, a global response organization founded by billionaire ex-astronaut Jeff Tracy on a beautiful island somewhere in the Pacific. His five sons, each named after a real-life astronaut, took control of the five Thunderbirds machines, a fleet of rescue craft designed by the engineering genius Brains. Your phenomenal mind made all this possible. Now you're going to see it in operation. These included Thunderbird 1, a hypersonic rocket piloted by Scott. International Rescue doesn't give up that easy. Thunderbird 2, the heavy transporter piloted by Virgil. Approaching danger zone. Thunderbird 3, the space rocket flown by Alan. Well, I do take Scott with me as a rule. Thunderbird 4, a submarine operated by Gordon. Ah, oh, relax, will ya? And Thunderbird 5, an orbiting space satellite we most often saw manned by John. Wow, we that's serious. Other regular characters on Tracy Island included Jeff Tracy's mother, Grandma, Engineer Tintin, and her father, Kirano. While deep in the Malaysian jungle, Kirano's sinister half-brother, The Hood, plots his latest diabolical scheme to capture international rescue secrets. I shall be invincible. <laughs> Jeff Tracy could also call on a worldwide network of agents to assist in operations. But the most often seen were British agent Lady Penelope Crichton Ward and her faithful manservant Parker, who carried out their missions in style in the famous pink Rolls Royce Fab One. Oh, my lady. Home, Parker. Whenever disaster strikes, be it an accident or deliberate sabotage, it's Thunderbirds are go. And if the situation requires specialized rescue equipment, Thunderbird 2's pod will always be carrying exactly what is needed to save trapped people or stop a runaway machine. These international rescue boys sure have some great equipment. Yeah. Originally planned as a series of half-hour episodes, the Thunderbirds format was expanded to a full hour on the orders of ITC head Lou Grade, who was extremely impressed by what he saw in the opening episode, Trapped in the Sky. We're not gonna make it! We're running out of runway! Right from the start, the series promised and delivered action and spectacle on the scale of a feature film, and continued to do so throughout its first season. The longer running time now allowed for a greater emphasis on the characters and their relationships, as well as action and excitement. And viewers also got to spend time getting to know each episode's guest characters before they were thrown into mortal danger. Maybe we can get through to international rescue. If anyone can help us, they can. Despite this greater emphasis on character, the show's star attractions were always the machines, with both the Thunderbirds craft and guest vehicles alike lingering in the minds of viewers long after the program had ended. That's a great aircraft. The show's format of disasters and rescues enabled the writers to come up with more exciting and action-packed scenarios than ever before, with the special effects and model department then realizing those ideas on a scale that, even today, still stands as some of the best work ever produced for television. A fine piece of filming. Along with dynamic vocal performances from the cast. You've got to locate them within the next two minutes. And a stirring brassy musical score from Barry Gray, every element of Thunderbirds came together almost perfectly to produce a series that very quickly became a hit with audiences worldwide. Crucially, it managed to capture the attention of adults as well as children, which perhaps made paying for the flurry of merchandising that came along with the show slightly more bearable. What's the next move? Thunderbirds was now an international phenomenon, and it only made sense to transfer that success to the big screen. Action! 1966 saw the release of the movie Thunderbirds Are Go, which was expected to be a box office sensation, but things didn't turn out that way. I can only think that it was because at that time, people weren't used to seeing television productions turned into feature films. Alongside the film, a second season of the television series was also being shot, but this was to be cut short after just six episodes when Thunderbirds was cancelled following a failed attempt to sell the series to an American network. I won't believe it 
I just can't. Believing that this sale was crucial to the show making its money back, Lou Grade ordered that Anderson and his team should instead get to work on another brand new series. Thunderbirds had come to a sudden and unexpected end, but the exploits of international rescue were not over yet. A second feature film, Thunderbirds 6, was to follow in 1968. Albeit to similar public indifference as the first, yet the television series continued to endure in the memories of fans. Over the next 20 years, nostalgia continued to grow, and in 1991 the series was repeated on BBC Two, resulting in a massive resurgence of interest that at times seemed to almost exceed that from the original 1960s showings. Another equally successful repeat run followed in the early 2000s, along with a live-action big screen adaptation in 2004 that proved popular with children but controversial among fans including Jerry Anderson himself. The film was a box office flop, but continual interest in the original television series has lasted well into the 21st century. Well, that's just great. The concept has recently been revived again in the form of CGI remake Thunderbirds Are Go, and to mark the show's 50th anniversary, a trilogy of new Super Marionation episodes were produced in 2015, which adapted three audio stories from the 1960s using the original puppetry and model techniques of the classic television show. How do you like that? I like it very much, Jeff. More than 50 years after it first appeared on our screens, Thunderbirds continues to thrill and delight audiences, young and old, around the world. And that's how it's gonna be, always. Its unique blend of high-action adventure and magic of the ever-appealing puppets and models makes it an almost perfect family show. Although it only ran for 32 episodes, the series has become an enduring television phenomenon, and it will no doubt continue to inspire and entertain for at least another 50 years. F.A.B.